Okay. Suranga na Bunivalu of Nandraka uh, Vakawalu. Um, I pay my deepest respect to the Vanua, to the chiefs, and to the people of uh, this village. Um, respected elders of the village, the head of school for Naivudini District School, Mrs. Eleni Maria, the school manager, Mr. Manasa Bari, the school management committee members, teachers, students, media representatives, ladies and gentlemen. It is an absolute joy to be in this village. This is the first time I have come to this village and uh, I was quite excited when I was asked to officiate at this function. I immediately said yes, not knowing really how far this village is. So I would like to thank FENC, I want to thank the CEO, Priya, for this kind invitation. And I'm here to officiate uh, in one of their functions, which is, which is generally to do with uh, providing, providing uh, bags and books to needy children. Now, we place a lot of emphasis on education. Education is very important because through education one can come out of poverty. One can improve their life. You must be knowing people who are in that village, who received the education, now they're doing better for themselves. They found good jobs, they're working somewhere, some may have become teachers, some may have become police officers, and surely they must be doing well. So it is this government's vision that we must educate our children. And because our vision is to educate our children, every year the government allocates somewhere around $490 million towards education. Gone are the days when parents had to look for money to pay for their children's school fees. Gone are the days when parents had to look for money to send their children to school and that money used to be for bus fares or boat fares. <coughs> and also parents also had to look for money to buy books, buy bags, buy textbooks. But now the government has made education free. And there is only one reason why education is free, because it is our vision to build a knowledge-based society. Right? That is our vision. Our vision is to see in each and every village the children do well, they become better in life. And if they study, they become or take up a job in a good area where they're able to earn a living, that means they will be help, helping their village, they'll be helping their vanua. So that is really the reason why there's so much focus on education. And education does not stop at secondary level. Education continues right up to university level. And the government again helps uh, students to attain whichever qualification they want to. If they want to enroll in any program at university or a teacher training institution, they can do that now. Because the government provides scholarship, they also provide loan to the students to study. So this is the burden we have taken off from the parents' shoulders. Because on their shoulder, they had a lot of burden because they had to send their children to school. Now, we all have gone through the school system, most of us seated here, where if we did not have our school fees, the headmaster used to send us home. He used to send us home and tell us that you go home and get the fees before you can come to school. You remember those days? But now we don't have that problem because the fees is already paid. Also for the school management uh, committee, 
in those days they had to do a lot of fundraising. Fundraising so that they can make some money, then they can build a classroom, they can repair a classroom, they can buy a desk, they can buy a photocopier, or they can buy chalk, <laughs> duster for the school. But now the government gives out every year about $68 million as free education grant. So through free education grant, we are able to give this money to the school management committee so that you can run your school. Right. And then you have your representative, and your representative is the school manager. So the school manager works with the head of school, and by working together, they're able to serve each and every child who goes to that school. Right, so we all are working in the interest of our children. Now, so in those days, what used to happen, one, the parent has to take out money from their pocket for the school fees, and also contribute money for the fundraising. So we have re removed both the burden. Now parents don't have to do fundraising for the school, neither do they have to uh, fork out money uh, for school fees, etc. So you can see, how important education is for, for this government. And we are very serious that not a single child should be left behind. We want to ensure that each and every child, whatever their interests are, if they want to become a rugby player, they should become one. If they want to become a plumber, they should become one. If they want to go to university and become a doctor, lawyer, they can do that as well. So we are looking at the capability of each and every child and how we can um, realize their dream. And uh, FENC was uh, established to serve the interest of needy children. And this year, the government contributed $100,000, and we've given $100,000 to FENC so that this organization can identify those children who are very poor. They come from a remote rural area, and they need help. And what this organization does, they provide a bag with stationery. So that completes. Um, the, the whatever the child needs to go to school. Because as I said earlier on, even if the child does not have a uniform, they don't have proper shoes, they can still go to school. No one should stop them. Right? Because it's all about learning. So I want to thank all of you for the warm welcome you've accorded to me and also for being here today to see the distribution of bags to our little ones. And we just hope that the parents will encourage their children to study. And if you see any child in the village not going to the school, I kindly request the village elders that you must talk to the parents, you must talk to that family, and encourage them that they must send their child to school. Because there is no reason why the child should not be in school. Right. So this is the responsibility I'm giving to the village elders. Because with your help, we'll be able to ensure that each and every child is in school. We are getting reports from some schools. There are children who are not going to school. The parents are not sending the children to school. Now this should not be the case because parents should not have any reason not to send their child to school. Right? So it is everyone's responsibility who all are seated here to make sure that all these children go to school every day. If they are sick, we understand. But if they are well, they must be in school and not roaming in the village. Okay, so I kindly seek your help.
uh, in this area. Also, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to emphasize that we have made some changes in school system for next year. From next year, we're going to have four terms, four school terms. Now we have three terms. So each term will be for 10 weeks. So term one, 10 weeks, then two weeks holiday. Term two, 10 weeks, again two weeks holiday. Term three, 10 weeks, two more weeks of holiday. Then we will have term four, and for term four, again 10 weeks, and then the teachers and students will go on six weeks holiday. Great. Yeah. So that will help the child and also uh, the, the teachers to be more relaxed when they are studying. Because we strongly believe that if a teacher is happy, then the students are happy. Because teachers teach well, and it's a happy environment. And we don't want to distress, uh, we don't want to stress our teachers. So, f so by having four terms, uh, we are taking into consideration uh, the teacher's welfare, and our intention is to um, de-stress our teachers from the burnout that they go through in a school system. Another change we have introduced is the enrollment of students in year one. See, before, if a child, uh, it's, a, it's a legal requirement that the child must turn six years old on 30th of July. Right, but from 2024, the child can, can turn six till December of that enrollment year. Right, so they have to turn six, they can turn six in July, they can turn six in September, they can turn six in November, they will get enrolled in year one. This is to save the wastage, you know, some parents were complaining to us that, um, a child is wasting one year of the education. And then we looked at the international practice, what is happening around the world, what have they done? And we found that most places, they have changed the law and they're allowing children to enroll in year one so long as they turn six uh, in that enrollment year. So these are the two main changes that we have introduced. But we do care about our primary school students. We do care about them. We are reviewing the legislation uh, along with, this is the education law that we have, but along with that, we are reviewing the curriculum and also the policies. We are changing the curriculum. In fact, we have changed the curriculum because now for year one to year three, children don't have to sit for the exam. Uh, they only focus on numeracy and literacy civic and moral education, because we want to uh, make sure that our children have manners when they grow up, they behave well, they respect our elders, they respect the Vanua, they respect one another. So we have introduced civic and moral education. Right, and we believe that through this change, uh, we'll be able to um, make the students interested in their studies and develop the very basic requirement, which is improving their numeracy and literacy. Right? So they are able to read and write. They are able to calculate, which is very basic, the foundation. So we want to build a very strong foundation. So these words, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, thank you very much. And I also thank FENC. Good night.